In our third type of chemical reaction, we're going to be looking at single replacement reactions. And in a single replacement reaction, you're going to have one element replacing a second element that's in a compound. So take a look at our example up here. We have cool, uh, this atom, whatever it is, uh, that is by itself. And it is going to replace the A, okay, this one, in our compound. So on our product side, we don't have A bonded to atom B anymore. We have A by itself, and we now have atom C and atom B that are a new compound. So we're going to have one element replacing another. The reactants in the products will always consist of one element and one compound. If you have two compounds on both sides, it is not single replacement. So that's one way to be kind of telling a single replacement reaction. Look for an, a single element and look for a product. Um, sorry, look for a single element and a compound on the reactant side and a single element with a compound on the product side. So here's an example. Here's a single element. We have zinc and we have the uh, copper nitrate here as a compound. And then notice that uh, zinc was by itself, but now on our product side, zinc is actually with the nitrate and copper is by itself. So zinc in essence kind of pushes the copper out of the way. So copper becomes the individual by itself element and zinc becomes the compound. Uh, so zinc and copper are just pretty much just changing places. Now the, the most important part of single replacement is that you do need to look at an activity table to determine if that's going to happen or not. So you have one of these in your notes and if you take a quick look at it you're going to notice now all these metals kind of listed over on the left hand side and then you have halogens over on the right but if you take a look at your metals I want you to find zinc and I want you to find copper. Zinc kind of in the middle and copper right underneath hydrogen. So if you notice where they're located, zinc is above copper on that chart. Um, sorry. And so because zinc is more active and copper is less active, zinc does want to replace copper. So whichever one is the higher on the list, is going to be the one that's the, it's paired um, with the compound. Um, halogens work the same way. Halogens can replace other halogens and their activity decreases as you go down the table. So if you notice the halogens in that chart go in order on the periodic table. Fluorine at the top and then iodine at the bottom. So if we have this example, okay, bromine is a nonmetal, so it's going to want to replace another non-metal, okay? So we would have sodium with bromine and then iodine on its own. If you take a look at your activity chart, we need to see if that really can happen or not. Bromine is right above iodine, but bromine is more active because it's above it. And so bromine, because it's more active, does want to replace the iodine and it will pair with the sodium and iodine will be by itself. Now, if we did kind of the same thing, only we changed um, halogens. We have bromine and chlorine, so we need to find bromine and chlorine. Well, chlorine is more active. Chlorine is higher up on the chart, and so we put an NR for no reaction. Um, chlorine is more reactive, so chlorine wants to stay with sodium, and bromine is not as reactive, so it is not going to replace the chlorine um, in that compound. So that activity chart is very important. You'll be given one of those on the test. You're not expected to memorize it, but you definitely need to know how to use it um, as it will tell you whether the reaction will happen or if you're going to get a no reaction. Uh, yes, this is the activity chart. Um, I think I put it in a slightly different place maybe in your notes, uh, but this is definitely important and you do need to know how to use that. So let's go ahead and try some examples here. And with each one, we want to see if this is really going to happen or not. So zinc is a positive, and so hydrogen is also a positive, and so this is, in essence, what's going to happen. If zinc is more reactive, it's going to push the hydrogen out of the way so that zinc can pair with the sulfate and hydrogen will be left 
as the element by itself. So we need to find zinc and we need to find hydrogen. And zinc is more active, it is higher on the chart, so yes, this is going to happen. So to predict our product or to write our product, we need to, okay, if we want to write our single element first, you don't have to, but okay, hydrogen is a diatomic, so it's going to stay as H2. And notice I have, um, in this one, I have some. Um, I've told you what state it's at, so I'm going to keep with that. Hydrogen, uh, sorry, it's a gas. Um, yeah, so hydrogen is going to be a gas. Now we have zinc and we have sulfate. Zinc is always a plus two charge. Sulfate's always a minus two charge. So this one works out to just be ZnSO4. And it's going to stay dissolved in water or aqueous. And now we need to balance it. And if we take a look at zinc, there's one of those on both sides. So zinc is good. Hydrogen, we have two of those and two of those, so hydrogen is good. And then we have SO4 as sulfate, and there is one SO4 over here. So everything is already balanced in this equation. Let's move on to another one. Um, okay, we have chlorine, which is a nonmetal, so it is going to want to replace the non-metal, and we need to check and see if that really is going to happen. Chlorine and bromine on the halogens side of our activity table. Chlorine is higher, so chlorine is going to bump bromine out of the way, and we're going to end up with bromine by itself, and it's a diatomic, so we want to make sure we do Br2, and it's going to stay in its aqueous dissolved in water form. And then we're going to have Na with Cl, so we need to do Okay, metal with a nonmetal. We need to look at our charges to make sure everything balances out here. We have a plus one with a minus one. So NaCl is fine, and that salt, which is going to be dissolved in water as well. Now we do need to balance this chemical reaction. And so we have uh, two chlorines on our reactant side, but only one on the product side. So we're going to want to put a two out in front of our salt. And that takes care of the chlorine, but now we need to take a look at the bromine and the sodium. We have two bromines on our product side. We also have two sodiums on the product side. But on the react or yeah, on the reactant side, we only have one of each. So putting a two out in front of our uh, sodium bromide compound will take care of the bromine and the sodium. All right, let's take a look at this next one. We have iron, which is a metal, and iron would want to remove the lead because metals will replace metals and nonmetals will replace nonmetals. But we need to make sure that that really is going to happen. So we have iron and lead, and if you find those on your activity chart, iron is more active, so it is going to want to push the lead out of the way. Now lead is not diatomic, so when we write lead over on the other side, just PB is good enough. But it is a metal, so it's going to be solid. And then we also have um, our iron that is going to react, and it is going to be iron nitrate. And it happens um, because iron is a transition metal. I'm just going to let you know here in this case that iron um, is taking over the lead's place. It has the same charge, so we're going to keep with the plus two charge uh, so that we end up with the NO3. And we need two of those to balance out the plus two from iron. And this is going to just run it out of room, so I'm just going to squeeze it in there. Um, again, we need to balance it, and in this case, it's already balanced. We have one iron on both sides, so iron's good. We have one PB, one lead, and then NO3, we have two of those. We also have the two over here, so everything is balanced as, as written. All right, let's take a look at a fourth example. We have silver with hydrochloric acid, and um, AG is a positive. It's a metal. We don't, uh, you know, hydrogen's not really a metal, but it is in the plus one family, so um, it, it's going to, if anything, uh, exchange places with the hydrogen. And so we want to check and see if that's going to happen. So if we need to find silver, and we need to find hydrogen on our activity chart. And if you look closely, in this case, hydrogen is more active. Hydrogen is higher on the chart, silver's lower. So silver cannot replace hydrogen. Your answer for this one is going to be NR, which means no reaction. You would not write 
any products because this won't produce any products. These are already happy the way they are. They are not going to replace each other to form anything new. So that does happen. That's why you need to be looking at the activity chart every time because uh, you'll, you'll get some of those in there occasionally. Last one, we have calcium with water and uh, we have uh, calcium pushing the water, pushing the H of the water out of the way. Um, if it is higher on the chart, and it is, if you take a look at calcium and hydrogen, calcium will, uh, it is higher, so it will replace the hydrogen. Now when you're replacing this one, I want you to think of water as a hydrogen ion with a hydroxide ion. So this is really H plus one with an OH minus one, and that's what water is. And so when calcium pushes the hydrogen out of the way, we're going to get H2, since hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. But calcium is going to be reacting with the negative portion, which is a hydroxide ion. And calcium is a plus 2, just from where it is on the periodic table. And we know hydroxide is a minus 1. So we have calcium hydroxide, but we need two hydroxides to make that all balance. So this would be our ending product here. We do need to balance this. Calcium is already balanced. We have one here and only the one on the product side. But our hydrogens are not balanced and our oxygens are not balanced. Hydrogen is in two places. We have two hydrogens here and we also have two hydrogens here. So two plus the two from the calcium hydroxide gives us four hydrogens. So to have four hydrogens on our reactant side, we need to put a two out in front. That gives us four hydrogens. It gives us two oxygens as well, and we already have two on the calcium hydroxide compound has two. So that simple one coefficient uh, balances all of our elements and compounds for that problem. So a quick recap of single replacement. Okay, we have this single element by itself, we have an, a compound, and on the other side we're going to have a compound and a single element. So that's one of the ways that you can tell just by looking at a, at a formula and at um, an equation whether or not it's single replacement element and a compound on both sides. And the reactants, um, got to be careful because you know there are times when the reaction will not occur. It's only going to replace the other element if it's more active. Uh, so we need to look at our, peri or not our periodic table, but our activity chart, and we need to find which one's more active, and that's the one that should be bonded in the compound. Your products, we want to have a different element and a new compound, so it can't be the same, um, it can't be the same element by itself on both sides, the same compound by itself on both sides. That would be a no reaction equation.